Day, we remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice defending the United States and we celebrate the freedom we have because of those sacrifices. Thanks for joining us here at five on your Memorial Day. I'm Grace McKenna. And I'm Isaiah, Kim Martinez, Doug and Shay are off Memorial Day. Obviously, Grace, we all know this tributes have been happening all day here mm -hmm. in Kentuckiana and across the nation honoring our service members. Today, veterans and their families gathered, gathered at the Patriots Peace Memorial in Louisville. That's just off River Road. The memorial is a special one honoring members of the armed forces who lost their lives in the line of duty in the line of duty, but not war. Today, officials enshrined the names of an Army Ranger, a Marine Corps warrant officer, and a Marine Corps aircraft crew chief, making 462 patriots who have been memorialized since 2002. One of the soldiers commemorated today, Charles Taffel, a Louisville native and alum of St. X High School. He was only 26 years old when he died. Charles would not have asked for something like this. We did it because we want people to know Charles, what a wonderful person he was, loyal, kind, dedicated, um, extremely excellent at what he did. So uh, it takes people like that to protect our freedoms. As a name is added to the structure, a brick is replaced with a glass plate with the Patriots name on it. So the memorial is ever changing. The other men added to the memorial today, Corporal Jacob Moore and Chief Warrant Officer R. Brandon Pennington. And this afternoon, the American Legion 5th District held a Memorial Day Remembrance Ceremony at Zachary Taylor National Cemetery. The ceremony included a monument dedication, wreath presentations on the graves of fallen service members, and speeches from keynote speakers. Some people live an entire lifetime wondering if they've ever made a difference. But these veterans don't have that problem. Their sacrifice has provided the freedom and liberty that each of us enjoys today. Let us give them the respect and honor they deserve. Veterans we spoke with at the ceremony today said it means so much to see everybody come out to that ceremony honoring and remembering our fallen veterans. And a Memorial Day tradition for so many around here in Louisville of kicked off earlier this morning. It's a special one. Hundreds gathered down, of course, mm -hmm. at the Great Lawn this morning for the mayor's hike, bike and paddle, a Louisville signature. It was a jam packed morning full of events with everything from yoga to pickleball to Zumba, you name it, plus live band performances before the main event kicked off at 10 in the morning. The hike went on for four miles on foot. Then folks went on for 15.7 miles on bike from the waterfront to Iroquois Park and back. And then, of course, finally, they paddled east along the Ohio River shoreline to the Beargrass Creek pump station and back. It's a great community event. You know, uh, look at all the people. Look at people from all the neighborhoods around town. Uh, just having fun. And if you want to join in on the next hike, bike and paddle, it'll be on Labor Day. That'll be September 4th. All right, we got a big traffic update to bring you this evening. You definitely want to be aware of this. The Sherman Mitten Bridge is closing all westbound lanes for six days starting tomorrow. Westbound I-64 will be closed starting Tuesday, May 30th, starts at 8 p.m. Lanes are expected to reopen Monday, June 5th, also at 8 p.m. If you're trying to get into southern Indiana, it's suggested that you try I-65 and 265 instead. And that weather, Grace, has uh, started to warm up a bit here this week. And Christina San Juan is here to tell us why it will probably just be getting hotter here. Yeah, this is actually one of the cooler days that we have on the forecast. Believe it or not, we have more July like weather uh, for the beginning of June, but we also have a couple of thunderstorms in between. But man, what a difference from just 24 hours ago. Yesterday, we didn't even touch 70 degrees here in Louisville, actually made it only to about 69 degrees uh, after the day was done. So right now we're sitting about 18 degrees warmer than we were at this time yesterday. Also Fort Knox feeling that heat as well. We have middle 80s from Scottsburg down to Louisville, a little bit cooler right now around Shepherdsville and stretching down to the south. You have the upper 70s, nearly 80 degrees in Hardinsburg and in Litchfield, and everybody's dealing with a good amount of sunshine out there. And as we go into the next couple of hours, we're actually going to be very slow to cool off. Even after sunset this evening, we're still going to have 70s well into about the midnight hour tonight, and it's going to be a very 
very mild start to the day tomorrow. In fact, just waking up in the middle 60s. However, I mentioned that storm chance. I'm going to have much more on that coming up in my full forecast in just about 10 minutes. Grace and Isaiah. Christina, thank you so much. Now the death toll during this spring meet at Churchill Downs is now at 12 horses, including two euthanized since just this past Friday. Now the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority is stepping in and announcing a three part plan in response. One horse died this past Friday and then another this past Saturday. Both of them were euthanized following leg injuries that were deemed inoperable and unrecoverable. But also, according to a Kentucky Stewards report, there was an unreported death from May 13th. The colt was transported to Lexington for observation and eventually put down. And now sports director Kent Spencer is joining us to talk a lot more about this because Kent, we know that Hissa announced some new moves today. Tell us a little bit more about exactly what they're doing. Yeah, Grace, 12 deaths at a spring meet is certainly cause for concern and the horse racing integrity and safety authority showed they recognize with the plan they unveiled. The first step is Hissa has called an emergency veterinary summit to be held tomorrow. Vet teams from Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission and Hissa teams will come together to review and analyze information about the events surrounding the recent deaths. Then Hissa says they are dispatching a track superintendent to provide a second look and analysis of Churchill Downs' track. This will be conducted by Dennis Moore, who has won awards in the industry for his work to maintain racetracks. This review will start this Wednesday. The Hissa CEO and racetrack safety director will be coming to Churchill Downs to look at the results personally. And the third part of the plan is Hissa is sending their director of equine safety and welfare to Churchill Downs. They'll help provide more veterinary oversight at the track. Hissa concluded their plan by saying they'll continue to monitor the situation closely. Ken, obviously this news has you know started back during Derby week and has continued on since then. What is Churchill Downs response to this? Yeah, well, Isaiah, they're working closely with the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority as well as the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission. This entire response includes the track and its personnel. In a statement sent after the 12th death, Churchill Downs said they are cooperating with both authorities during their investigations. They also said they've been testing the track in the last few weeks, saying all results have come back consistent with other race tracks. They say they've also engaged in an epidemiological study which focuses on diseases for each individual horse to try to find a pattern. Now, with all that being said, we're still unsure what the main cause of this spike could be. And let's be honest, I think that's the real concern here. Absolutely, Ken. We appreciate you. We're going to be watching all of that carefully. So much more from you in the days to come. I'm Absolutely. Sure. All right. Thank you so much. On to some more of our stories now. A man is dead tonight after an incident inside the Louisville jail. He's the 14th person to die in custody since late 2021. Metro Corrections said it happened around 730 Sunday evening. Officers believe the 28 year old man took his own life. Metro Corrections Director Jerry Collins said, quote, this loss of life is something that we never want to see happen. We're going to keep working every day to bring awareness to the mental health needs of the incarcerated population. End quote. This is the second death at the jail this year. And right now, LMPD's River Unit is on a recovery mission for a man who went overboard in East Louisville. LMPD said it happened around 1230 in the morning on Sunday. Officers were told Harrods Creek Fire and EMS responded to a water rescue near Captain's Quarters. Divers searched overnight and couldn't locate the man. This is now considered a recovery operation. Two people are dead and one more in critical condition after a house fire in the Crescent Hill neighborhood. It happened on Kennedy Avenue just south of Frankfurt Avenue a little after seven last night. According to the Louisville Fire Chief, about 60 firefighters from six different units responded. No victims names have been released yet, but we do know a man in his 50s and a woman in her 80s both died and a woman in her 50s is in critical condition over at the hospital. We also know one pet died in the fire. Extensive fire. Uh, we called for a second alarm, which brought another probably 30 firefighters, a total of about 60. Um, a lot of concealed spaces, it's a very large house, um, so, so we called for the additional units. The chief says crews inspected the house earlier this year and it did have working smoke alarms. The cause is still under investigation, but fire officials tell us it does not appear to be suspicious. 
Last night, family and friends called for action after two weeks of waiting for information about the investigation into the shooting at Shively Animal Clinic. On May 14th, Mother's Day, 21-year-old vet tech Trent Taylor was fatally shot after what police called an altercation during his shift at the clinic. Police have said the case could be self-defense, but Taylor's family disputes that. Taylor was an expectant father with a baby due in four months. As dozens gathered for hours yesterday, they all told the same story of a young father excited for the birth of his baby, someone who was passionate about animals and protecting his family. We went from planning a baby shower to planning a funeral. On Mother's Day. On Mother's Day. Just an amazing person all around. I think everybody should have gotten to meet and know TJ. He was one of a kind and not only was a, a friend taken, but a father a son and a brother were taken off this planet and there needs to be justice. Ultimately, the decision to file charges falls to the Office of the Commonwealth's Attorney. As of Sunday, it said it has no updates, sharing the following statement with us, saying, I can confirm that our office has received the case from the Shively Police Department, and it is assigned to a prosecutor to get through the thorough review process it deserves. There is no timeline yet for that process. An Army veteran and his wife are shaken today after a stray bullet ended up in their living room. Really scary situation here. It happened over the weekend when one of their neighbors in Henry County was messing around with an AR-15. Hmm. WHAS 11 reporter Travis Breeze spoke with the couple about their terrifying experience. Pat and Kathy Conroy say this house near Pleasureville is usually a little slice of heaven for them, but they had quite a scare on Saturday night when somebody messing around with an assault rifle a half mile away shot right through their back wall. Kathy heard gunfire throughout the day Friday and Saturday, but thought it would just be annoying. That was until 9.15 p.m. Saturday when a bullet blasted through their back wall and ended up in the living room near the TV. A state police officer showed up and they were able to find the shooter nearby who apologized and offered to pay damages. The Conroys feel lucky no one was hurt and they want people to realize the damage assault rifles can do. With me being out on the deck, Five minutes before that, who knows what could have happened, you know? I mean, I don't think there's enough awareness as far as how powerful these weapons are. The Conroys would like to see the AR-15 destroyed, and they think people ought to have required trainings before using such weapons. Kentucky State Police say there is an open investigation to determine any charges. In Henry County, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11, on your side.